I am the Commissar. That's my name. Forged Alliance Forever. That's the game. And who have we got with a claim to fame? Today, it's a 2v2 ladder match with the hot team in the northwest and the cold team in the southeast out for a delicious double date on the map Forgotten Isles. Let's go on and meet them. Here in the cliff position for hot team, we have Wekatha, whom we saw in last cast under his new name of Immortal D. I used to think that was a German name, but now I think it's supposed just to be an anagram of the wreck. So there's that. Anyway, Wekatha is 1396 rated. He's playing UEF in red. And down here on the canal position, we've got Electrician, who is 1718 rated, also UEF in Burgundy. And their mirrors. On the cliff position for Code Team, we have Pachelka, who is 1163 rated. He's Cybron in baby blue. And down at the canal, we have Tron, today's highest rated player at 1937. He is Seraphim in dark blue. Quick look at the map. First of all, the plateau players, cliff players, they have hydros, though it's a slight walk, as you can tell by the fact that Wekatha felt forced to build one P gen before walking out there. Whereas the players down here in the canal positions do not and so electrician is building a big bunch of pigeons while sending ng straight to the reclaim i don't see as many reclaim ng's out for tron this fellow is coming solely out here but maybe he's got well he's, he's much better than me so you must know how to balance his eco and pachelka didn't build a Pigeon before heading out, but he sent NG straight into these trees to reclaim to make up the difference. As for places where people can go, these islands are expected to be relatively safe for their nearest teams unless someone wins horrifically at Navy. And then we've got these expansions here, 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 and here for each team. I'm expecting we're going to see a divide somewhere around here between the teams. But, I don't know. So, where are people sending engineers? <clears throat> Wekatha has sent a lot of his engineers out early across the canal, and his comm is following, coming out here. Tron, however, has chosen to do his going across the canal work for the team, whereas Pachelka is staying in his base and focusing more up here. That said, I do see a drop coming up and we'll follow that in a moment. Electrician has immediately sent out his come around here, so in general the hot team are just being a bit more expansion-y than the cold team, sending their dudes out faster and grabbing more positions like, look at this, this is quite a big raid, tank, lab and scout, and it could cause trouble for Tron's engineer here. This position on the other team has been taken by the cliff player, not by the canal player. And we also have an early bomber. Meanwhile, Pachelka has dropped into the reclaim here, the mex is here, and the mex is here. And while Wekatha did get an NG out here fast, it was only one engineer because it had to walk. Meanwhile, only one engineer, uh, no defences or anything, and this little expansion is just going to be eaten straight up. So that could be a good early gain for the hot team. But Pachelka's con will clear it up. If he can kill this NG and these mixes, it will slow the cold team down. Meanwhile, though, this bomber out from Tron, that could get some eco damage done in response, and it's going straight for the main base. And those three engineers look like it's target. And boom, three engineers... And is this going to be the best hover bomb we have ever seen? Look at that hover bombing, and look at that! Seven more engineers for a total of ten! That bomb has paid for itself, what, six times over? And that's even before you count the amount of bird power that it sold down by taking out those engineers that could have gone out and built stuff. And make that eleven engineers. Eleven engineers, my dudes! That bomber is MVP 
all by itself already. Meanwhile though, this expansion has been shut down and Pachoka has come out to rebuild it rather than Tron, so Pachoka taking control of this landmass for the cold team just as Wekatha has come over to do it for the hot team. His drop over here has been caught by another of Electrician's raids and shut down, so this raiding out from Hot Team is paying off. Look at the Ecos. Hot Team total 83, Cold Team total just 49. But Tron has gone into early Navy. He's got two naval factories up and he's already got a frigate heading out to harass from the canal here, whereas... Well, Wekatha has built a one naval factory, but it, it, it finished after Tron had his both up. And so this early naval lead will be pretty important. These Mexis, for example, can be shot from the canal, and Tron is doing that right now. Another bomber heading out and submarines to support the frigate. Those mexes are going to be nice killers for the cold team. That's quite a lot of tanks that have been picked up there. Where's he going to drop them? This bomber doesn't feel like it's going to be as effective. In fact, it hasn't got a single kill and it's going to be caught by that inti. But I'm more interested in this drop right now. We'll look at this huge heap of spam from electrician in a moment. But this drop, where's it going? He's got it coming down over here, and I think that's a mistake because these Inti's have seen it. It needs to drop here and quickly clear up the, these engineers where we can actually get work done. But I don't think that's going to get work done because those Inti's are on it. And boom! That drop goes down, wasting six tanks, as well as the transport. And I think that was a bit of a mistake for Electrician. First comm upgrade for Rekatha, who is building the gun upgrade. Now, there was a big heap of spam coming around from Electrician and he's doubling down on that with more factories here but with Pachelka's com coming up from here and with this turret here to stop easy raids going there Pachelka should be able to defend however he's only got one land factory producing here and Electrician already has his factories back here two of them, three of them and he's queuing up more here so Pachelka might have to start producing more if he's planning to get anything done against Electrician Meanwhile, Tron's frigate has got a lot of engineer kills. There have been engineers coming across here back and forth, and while this frigate might finally see it off, this engineer has killed not only the, fr the engineer, this submarine has killed not only the submarine that Wekatha sent out, but also several engineers, since it can target UEF engineers. The UEF engineers, unlike Eon and Serra engineers, float rather than hover. So, um, submarines can target them and two more frigates come in these have been rebuilt but they're gonna get shot again and this naval play before the hot team had a chance to get established is very good from Tron and now there are submarines coming in to pester and try and shut down this naval yard I don't think they're gonna get it destroyed before this top launcher goes up they should talk the engineers first so they can't build the top launcher but Tron is understandably worrying about matters elsewhere he's starting the gun upgrade over here Look at this spam though from Electrician. Pachelka, as we theorised, is having to fall back. And he ha is beginning to put up more production here and he will probably be able to defend with his comp since Electrician is still back here building with his. But Pachelka has been forced to fall back. Now Tron we have two things to know here. One of them is that he has T2 land completed already and nobody else on the whole map has even started T2. So that could be quite powerful. And he's already got Yenzines coming out to mass in the canal. But he saw Wakatha's gun comb coming, he saw this spam coming and he felt he had to cancel his gun upgrade. And he's retreating into the water. This turret is holding back the spam a bit but there are Lobos in here and that Lobo will easily kill that turret. So both Rekatha and Electrician are making very good gains on the ground, but the Navy control of the canal might have made a big difference. And see, these Mexes are still dead, and the Ecos have, as a result, evened out, despite the territorial advantage in the hands of the hot team. 
Tron has restarted his gun upgrade in the water and he's now got quite a lot of Yenzines here. But Wekafer has regained control of the water around his base. I hope Tron doesn't let his early advantage in Navy slip because that could pay off pretty well if he doubles down on it. Like, one of these could be going T2 and I think it's a mistake that it isn't. Electrician and Pachelka are both backing up their comms with decent amounts of spam, though both are still naked. Wekatha has come around here and is making a bit of progress here. There isn't any anti-air in this mix, there are only a couple of inties from Wekatha, so Tron is doing a good job shutting it down with bombers, but this wave is quite bad. However, Tron finishes the gun upgrade. But instead of supporting his comm with these Yenzines, they are heading around with another frigate trying to do damage along the canal. We'll follow them in a moment. Another drop comes out from Electrician. We'll see where he's sending it. Oh, this one's going to be... Oh, this one's coming over here, which could be pretty nice. Just getting a bit of damage at the back of the river. Is that turret there still to worry about? So unless there's any Lobos in there, he might have a problem. Tron has come out of the water with his comm, and since he's got ever more Yenzines coming out of his HQ, and now he's got a support factory as well, he should probably be able to hold work the back from causing problems there. This drop lands, and it's got a lot of Zoes, and they do target the um, point defence, so... That's going to be a problem for Pachelka unless he shuts it down fast and he moves a bunch of dudes across to do it. I was thinking that Wekatha would be pushing around here and trying to get more damage done in Pachelka's relatively undefended base, but Wekatha, I think, is more worried about Tron's comm, and so he's pulling back around here. Meanwhile, Pachelka has got gun and stealth. Electrician's still naked, so that could make the difference, and Pachelka thinks it is. It's going to push in and try and reclaim this territory. Meanwhile, a Zui drop has landed here in response to Electrician's drop and that's going to get three mixes nice and easy and the Yenzines come in. The Yenzines are... The, the subs can't target them because these are hobby units. There's a decent amount of Lobos here from Electrician but the Yenzines are quite fast and are dodging past them and these are all T2 mixes from Wekfair. If it gets any of these, this Yenzine raid could easily pay for itself. Meanwhile, Wekatha has decided to fall back and consolidate a bit here rather than pushing on around, and he has got some damage done here. But that does give Pachoka a chance to reinforce. These Yenzines now two T2 mechs is killed, that's doing well, and they're splitting up to av avoid the bombers and getting in among the buildings so that the bombers do friendly fire. Oh, this is excellent play for five T2 mexes. This is amazing, this CNZ raid. But Wekatha has gone for T2 Navy and is about to finish a frigate. Oh, it's only a frigate. Come on, where's the Destro's man? You've built T2 Navy, build a Destro. That could really make the difference here. Electrician, however, has taken an air fight over Pachelka's base and is winning it. So, a hot team now have air control. And we'll see what they do with that, but it, what they should be doing with it, and there are, there's a lot of bombers here, is taking out these Yenzines. But nobody's gone for tech to air at all, so there's no gunships, which will be the perfect counter here. And indeed, Wekatha's starting base, sure, he's got a decent amount over here, but Wekatha's starting base is entirely destroyed. Despite that, hot teams still have the better eco. They've lost this, they've lost this, and they still have the better eco, so that's some amazing eco management from the hot team and the Yenzines come on across here. These mechs are still T1. I don't know how Electrician's got that much eco. We'll look at it in a moment when the um when the tastiness of this fight is over. But more mechs is going down to these Yenzines. Finally I think they're all gonna die here, but look at the success of that raid. That was amazing and Tron's next wave of Yenzines is here. It's supporting his comm and his gun comp is charging in against Wekathers, while with his gun and stealth comp, the Choker has forced Electrician back up here. 
So, a big turn in favour of the colour team, I feel, but this other raid could irritate Pacherica unless he sends some units around to deal with it pretty pronto. And Electrician has been building Navy as well. They're sending the frigates down the bottom, but with these bombers to support it, Electrician's Navy is landing on Fond's naval yards. Could the hot, despite the early hot team focus on the Navy, could they be a the hot team focus on the Navy? Despite the early code team focus on the Navy, could the hot team be about to evict them from the water? It's certainly possible. Meanwhile, Tron is about to engage Wekther with his core, and Wekther has a bit more spam, but Tron's spam is higher tech, and in this fight, my money would be on Tron if it weren't for these PDs that Wekther can fall back to. These guys have got a decent amount of damage done, but Pachelka is defending both with units and from the air. Runs down into the yellow, but no retreat yet. He's still intent to push Wekther back. And let's take a quick pause to look at the Ecos. Wekther spending a lot more mass than he has, and I think that mass store is the only thing saving him from a power store, so that could be fun. Electrician doing a perfect balance. Look at that, that's exactly where you want your eco to be. Bass in the middle, power just a little overflow, not much. He hasn't got overcharge available though, which may be a mistake. Pachelka does have overcharge available, but his power isn't going up as fast as he'd like to be able to use it, especially with his com about to push in on here. Feels a bit unsupported, we'll look at it in just a moment. And Tron, Tron's eco, that's bad. Tron overflowing mass. Oh, he's saving it just there, but he needs more power. Anyway, back to seeing the fight. Taking a quick look down here, where both Tron and Wekther are in the yellow, but these PDs are no match for a gun com, and Tron is keeping nicely back. But this is where we need to look, because... That's a lot of triads into which Pachelka is walking reasonably unsupported. That's not going to take a bunch of triads. Let's on this. There's a bunch of arty raining down here. Could Pachelka have overextended into the yellow? He brings in his units to support. That com but that comb can't just retreat into the water because there are subs waiting there. And he realizes that and pulls away. But triads above, subs below. I don't think Pachelka was in a very good position. 500 hit points, but he's almost out of range. Only a couple of tries in range. He dodges, but it's too late. Boom! Pachelka goes down at the 18 minute mark. But during that time, Wekther has been surrounded by the Yenzines, and more Yenzines come in, and Wekther is also into the red. He dodges, he jinks, but there's no getting out of this one. Boom! Wekther also dies just a few seconds after Pachelka, so now we just have Electrician versus Tron. <coughs> and in that time what's happened well electrician has successfully destroyed the naval yards belonging to Tron so now in a complete ch turnaround from the beginning of the game hot team now has control of the water whereas cold team has much more control of the land look at this little drop of Medusas originally built by Pachelka and they've killed one that was five producers and they've killed one T2 Mex and are going for a second they've probably killed for themselves uh, paid for themselves already with that kill but that's a lot of mech marines and that's a cheeky little sub there but more Yendines coming across the middle Oh, look at that. The Medusa dies, but with its last shot, after it's dead, it kills a second T2 mech. So that is a definite little win for Tron. Five Medusa for two, for two um, T2 mechs. 
and these labs are being countered by rhinos, labs and jesters which is an interesting mix but the jesters are unsupported by air because here are the fighters for Tron they're landed over here and so these jesters are just going to die to these inties from electrician That T2 naval yard is finally in use. We have a destroyer here and a cruiser here. And here we have the classic fight, hover versus navy. And the hover is T2 and the navy is T1, but that's a decent amount of navy. And of course, naval units are more expensive in general than land units of equivalent tech, produce a bit more damage, can certainly absorb a bit more fire. And I think those Yenzines are going to die. before they even see the destroyer. Does Tron know about the destroyer? He does. But Tron now content to stay out of the water. He's managed to get more units around here. These labs are trickling down, but labs should be easy to stop, especially in a trickler. And we have a drop launching here, but is it just me? Are those Sky Slammers on board? I asked this question in a recent cast when Pavor just built a big heap of Sky Slammers and put them down and let their pitiful little anti-ground capacity poke away at a bunch of mexes. I suppose that if you're only trying to kill mexes, which are reasonably low HP, you don't need the anti-ground capacity and you need them to be able to shoot at the air as long as they can just tickle the mexes to death because this is an island which you can't reach from the land. I assume that's the reason. Yeah, look at that. Why would you just drop sky salmons? I don't get it. Just have like six sky salmons, two lobos. Lobos producer, you know what I mean. Anyway, in comes the navy and there are also now riptides joining in here to, to um add a bit more firepower and that early raid from Tron hurting electrician here is being repaid in kind with interest where by interest I mean a destroyer and that destroyer could do that dest well, whereas the frigates could take out this that destroyer and that cruiser could just smack this entire base so Tron is gonna have to be super careful here Now, for quite a while, we've had T2 land on the field for both teams, but do we have any T3 in play? Well, this, we do have T3 in play, because earlier I was saying that nobody had any air tech, Tron has decided to remedy that and has got a T3 air factory up. How's his land tech? Where's his HQ? It's still T2 for the server side of things. I don't even know where the HQ is for the land side, for the cyber side of things. There it is. Well, it was there, but it's getting cruisered. He definitely needs some TMD. Meanwhile, Transcom is doing an excellent job just flapping away at the units coming in across the water, but I think that destroyer might be a bit of a threat to him. The T3 Pigeon is going up, and that will enable him to produce T3 air units because he'll have to be careful of these cruisers but if you can take out the cruiser somehow then a gunship like one whaler would do epic damage around here however he's losing stuff in his starting base as a significant number of riptides come in and he's sending units around here I mean is this just an engineer raid? just reclaim all this stuff? that's fun but his main problems are here where this wave of riptides is eating him up <coughs> he's also putting up tactical missile launches there which could get some damage done here that would be nice taking out these mexes let's see if he's able to do anything with it and he is defending with gunships because the cruiser is all the way back here he might have killed a cruiser up here if he did he's done exactly what I thought he would which is nice it's nice when a high rated player does something I think he's going to do because it means I made the right call am I right? However, 
in come the Riptides. That's a lot of gunships in defence. That's five gunships in defence now. Nothing really to stop them. And that, that combined with the Tito Com should be enough. Nice rank of vet for the Tito Com. Gun Com should be enough. Nice rank of vet there. That's six gunships now. And having defended here, I really think they should have come down and taken out these Destros. Or does Trump think his four vet gun com can just walk in there and overcharge them? Time for another quick look at player Ecos. Electrician with a very full mass bar, nice mass balance, huge amount of energy stored for overcharge. That's just fantastic. And Tron. Well, Tron is having mass troubles. He's producing more mass than Electrician, but he's overspending so much that he's having great difficulty producing at the rate he wants to. So that's quite that's quite a difference in economic stratagems back to our fight. Poor old Tron, eh? He's had he had such good map control and suddenly this big heap of navy came around and gave him a bit of a wrecking. Now up here he's defending with gunships which is quite nice given that he's the only player with I think any air tech at all. I'm not seeing any air tech still for electricians so like two ASFs and he'll guard those gunships from any inti counter along with the intis he's got already and he's just carving his way up here. There's now six renegades and a whaler, which could hurt the com if they were able to jump him in time. Wekafet agrees with me, which is quite nice. I always like it when players who are higher rated than me agree with me. And Electrician just walks into the water, because what can Tron do? Well, I suppose technically the answer is build a huge wave of torp bombers and shoot him like that, but does he know where Electrician's Com is? He actually doesn't. So, these gunships are going to have to content themselves with eco raiding. And as well as this cruiser sneaking around the bottom to bombard there, there's this cruiser coming around the top to bombard there. So, good use of UEF cruiser missiles to generally harass and make life difficult. Over here, Tron is trying to get back into the water with a bunch of naval yards which he's carefully positioned a little bit out of sight but it feels to me given this huge horde of navy here that it might be a little too little a little too late and the gunships are going to get some good work done here I think I saw yeah there's some samfire coming out of this base for electricians so Tron will have to be careful but he is picking up a bunch of mixes with these gunships and that will hurt the eco for Electrician, but not as much as this has hurt the eco for Tron. Look at poor old Tron, down to only 50 mass per tick. Do you think there's a way out of this for him? Well, this cliff is certainly going to help, because have a look at that. This huge navy is firing shots up, and they just cannot get over the cliff. Meanwhile, another whaler is out here picking away at this swarm of tanks, which doesn't have any AA in shore, but that's pissing in the wind because that's a lot of tanks and it's more than one whaler can deal with. It might be more than Tron himself can deal with. Those look like pillars with a couple of riptides mixed in. I think those are mostly riptides. Yeah, those are mostly riptides. And suddenly Tron finds himself surrounded. After taking out the Mexes here, his gunships have gone on to try and stop the naval production by shooting the naval HQ. But it feels to me like that that's not going to make a difference and that he needs to be worried about the navy that's already there. Meanwhile, Riptides get into Tron's base and he's got the gun com. He's got a couple of He's trying to put up T2PDs, but like one or two T2PDs 
Are they really going to stop this amount of riptides? Again, the terrain is working in his favour. But that only lasts for a moment as the riptides just come over the hill. What's that coming over the hill? No, it's not a monster. It's a big horde of riptides. And you say, Mr. The Commissar, you only post games with crazy unexpected comebacks. So how's Tron going to get out of this? How do you think Tron's going to get out of this? I mean, he's still full health on his com. He's got four vets. But he has lost both his TPP gens, so that's going to put a little dent in his ability to make air production. He's got a TP land HQ as well. And it's trying to produce loyalists, which would be an excellent counter to Riptides if it weren't being shot up. And suddenly he's down into the red. I will tell you how he's going to get out of this, my loyal viewers. He isn't. The writing is on the metaphorical wall. The fat lady has metaphorically sung. Well played, says Tron, and it was well played by everybody, him included. But boom, Tron goes down at 31 minutes. Could he have saved that had he just put a little more into air and got more raids out in time to stop all this production from electrician? Because should he have gone for the naval yard earlier with his air? Or, earlier on, if he'd done what I said I thought he should do right at the beginning, double down on the navy and not just lose that fantastic early lead he had with his raids over here, would that have won the game for him? Tell me in the comments below. While you're down there, please don't forget to like, subscribe and obey. I am the Commissar and I will see you next time.